Oh, good morning. Good Monday morning. Monday morning after holiday, so it's even harder to get started after a few days off. Good celebration with family and friends, I hope. And a Merry Christmas that we all had. Looking forward to the new year. If we can get through some of this weather that's coming. Well, we'll get to the new year anyway, but got some weather coming, it sounds like. But it is winter in Iowa, so we'll get ready for that. This morning, we're going to start in Psalm 65. Uh, what a mighty praise. What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. We will fulfill our vows to you, for you answer our prayers. All of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. What joy for those you choose to bring near, those who live in your holy courts. What festivities awaits us inside your holy temple. You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, our Savior, o our Lord. <clears throat> you are the hope of everyone on earth, even those who sail on distant seas. You formed the mountains by your power and armed yourself with mighty strength. You quieted the raging seas with their pounding waves and silenced the shouting of the nations. Those who live at the ends of the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises <clears throat> to where it sets, you inspire shouts of joy. You take care of the earth and water it, making it rich and fertile. The river of God has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest of grain, for you have ordered it so. You drench the plowed ground with rain, melting the clods and leveling the ridges. You soften the earth with showers and bless its abundant crops. You crown the year with a bountiful harvest. Even the hard pathways overflow with abundance. The grasslands of the wilderness become a lush pasture, and the hillsides blossom with joy. The meadows are clothed, um, are clothed with flocks of sheep, and the valleys are carpeted with grain. They all shout and sing for joy. <clears throat> this is a, uh, an, a change of, of psalms for David. Uh, he's not being chased by his enemies. He's not complaining about the injustices. He's celebrating God this morning. And he's celebrating all that God has done in, in his creation. And the first four verses, he, he's saying, What mighty praise, O God, belongs to you in Zion. He's speaking... Uh, to directly to the Jewish people, uh, to those who worship in Zion, those who worship in Jerusalem, who worship in the in the temple. What festivities await us inside your holy temple? He says, God lived inside of that holy temple, and David knows that there are celebrations, festivities to be had when God is in charge and in control. He tells us in the end of verse 2 and in verse 3, all of us must come to you. Though we are overwhelmed by our sins, you forgive them all. David's encouraging his people that God is a forgiving God and that uh, it is necessary for us to come to God. We come to God in repentance. We, at that time, they came to the temple with sacrifices um, and worship. Uh, we can simply worship God right here where we are. Jesus is our, uh, is our sacrifice once and for all for sin. And so we confess our sins uh, to God. Jesus has paid for our sins on the cross. And uh, we are forgiven uh, by God. And that is a, it's an, it's a marvelous thing when you stop and think about it. It is an amazing uh, wonder that God can in his holiness and righteousness, forgive us and forgive us regularly. And so we, we should be rejoicing over that um, this day and every day. <clears throat> he goes on in verse 5, and then he, he kind of changes who he's writing to a little bit. Uh, he again says, You faithfully answer our prayers with awesome deeds, O God our Savior. You are the hope of everyone on earth. And so... Now he's talking not just about the Jewish people, but everyone, everyone on earth. And he talks about how God's created the mountains and he's got mighty strength. He's quieted the raging seas. 
and he silenced the shouting of the nations. Uh, that phrase kind of means the tumult or the, the, the chaos that's in the nations. God has silenced them. And those who live on the earth stand in awe of your wonders. From where the sun rises to where it sets, you inspire, inspire shouts of joy. So it's the entire earth that God is, uh, and his, all of his people, from, from every corner, from every place that God is reaching to his people and providing them this same, this same hope um, in Jesus, actually. David is, isn't ref, referencing the Messiah right here, but that's what we know. Jesus has died for the sins of the world. And so that's our hope. That's our message to our friends and neighbors. And then he changes in verse 9 to finish out the Psalms. You take care of the earth. Uh, God is concerned about his creation. Uh, it starts out, he's, he's concerned, David writes, of his people of Israel, his chosen people. Then it moves to his uh, the people of all the world, all the creation, the Gentiles, everyone, including you and me. And now he's going even to the earth. Uh, God is concerned with and cares for his earth. He waters it. He makes it rich and fertile. God's river is has plenty of water. It provides a bountiful harvest. He talks about how he uh, melts the clods. He levels the riches. He he drenches the plowed, ground, cloud, the plowed ground with rain. For those of you who are farmers, you understand that. You totally get that. Um, the rain coming at the right time, the ground being protected, or pro, uh, uh, yes, uh, provided with the nutrients and, and the crops growing. You, you guys get that better than any of us and how God provides all of that. Um, you work you till the ground, you put the seed in there, and then you go to sleep, and God takes care of it. And David's just reminding us that, that God takes care of the earth also. And um, they all, he says at the end, they all shout and sing for joy. And so this morning, it, it's kind of a, I, as I was reading through this, I was really, I was encouraged as I was reading through it. Gosh, this is an encouraging psalm. This is, again, like I said, no, there's no enemies, there's no fight, there's no struggle. This is just celebrating God. Uh, God within his people, God within the world, God within his creation. But then I began to also think about, and it's not that David's not dealing with reality, but I got thinking, gosh, Romans 8 says that even creation is groaning under the sin of the world. And I thought about how our year... Uh, we got hit with the Drake, the ratio. We had some drought. We had, and you can think, oh man, <clears throat> I wish that this psalm was true. Well, this psalm is true. Um, God still cares for his people, even though his people are rebellious. God still cares for the world, even though people continue to walk away and ignore him and, and proclaim that he doesn't exist. God continues to, to care about his creation even though the storms and the, and the weather isn't always what we want and there's destruction. Um, it's all under the weight of sin, but God is still there. God is still caring. And I even got to thinking this psalm is, is encouraging us with uh, uh, the hope of our future. When Jesus comes back and he, again, makes all things new and all things right, this psalm will be totally true here as a God cr taking care of his creation. There will be no more storms. There will be no more raging nations. There will actually be no need for forgiveness for sacrifices because it will be taken care of once and for all. And so this psalm was encouraging to me. Uh, it made me real, again, remember the truth that God is still at work and we have a future uh, to look forward to. So with that in mind, let's pray. <clears throat> Father, we thank you for, again, for your word and the encouragement we received from David. Even in his day, he knew that all people needed to come to you for forgiveness. And he knew that you were a forgiving God. 
we know that today as you have sent your son Jesus. We've just celebrated his birth. And we will move forward now to Easter where he will die a, a brutal death on the cross, but for our sins, to set us free from sin. And he will raise again, giving us hope. And this creation that you take care of, it's groaning under sin now, but this creation is still being taken care of by you. <clears throat> and we will look forward to that day when all things are made new. Again, through Jesus, not through our efforts, but through what Jesus has done. So Father, give us hope today. Remind us of our need to uh, repent of our sins, to um, stay on the right path, the righteous path. Remind us that you have a message for all the world, all those we come in contact with today. And help us today, even though we have storms coming in when our area and and things might not be exactly what we want. Help us to just marvel at your creation today. Help us to stand in awe of your creation today as we go about our uh, as we go about our day. And would we have shouts of joy in our heart to you? Because you are a great and mighty and awesome God. In Jesus' name, Amen. All right, good to see you, Elaine and Holly and Kelly. Um, thanks for joining. Have a great day, and I will be back tomorrow. Bye-bye.